Welcome back everybody, it's really good to see you. You know, changing conditions is a prime way to test what we know and a way to hone our skills. And when we're talking about land nav and doing some orienteering, you know, one of the most common ways that we can change conditions is by conducting land navigation in low light. But using a compass at night is something that for a lot of people is just really nerve wracking. Uh, but once you get to learn the compass, and you learn how to use this compass at night, it's, this is a key instrument that will keep you going on your way. If you like the content of the video, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date. Most importantly though, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video. All right, so Stoker here, you know, we're gonna be looking at uh, the compass again and how, how to use this thing at night. And I'm gonna show this and, and walk through this a couple different ways. One of them is just me here, you know, kind of talking uh, to you about it, holding the compass in my hand. I'll actually show you what this looks like when you have absolutely no light at all so that you can see and have trust and confidence in yourself that you can use this compass at night. A couple key things that we need to, that we're going to be using uh, at night from our compass obviously is our bezel ring, right? This bezel ring, each, again, each click is three degrees, which means that there's 120 clicks uh, for the full circle. And then I'm going to have my North Seeking Arrow, which I'm going to be using the illuminating line on that. Uh, and I have my fixed index line, which is going to come into, uh, into play. And of course, I got my red numbers and degrees and a couple other illuminating lines down on the, on the uh, base plate itself. So those are pretty much the key things. You know, I'm not going to be using uh, my siding wire because I can't see at night. Basically, two different ways. You can do the one way for both of them, but it just ends up being a lot of clicks. So again, so I got 120 clicks on my bezel ring to come all the way around. All the way around is 120, right? So let's say I need to take an azimuth of something that's less than 180 degrees. We'll, we'll just, for the, this one, we'll make it easy. We'll say it's 30 degrees. 30 degrees is my azimuth that I need to go. So I'm going to start off with my illuminating line on my bezel ring right on top of the index line. And then I'm going to divide 30 by 3, which gives me 10. So I'm going to turn my bezel ring 10 clicks to the left, counterclockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And once I have that done, I'm going to rotate my body. until the illuminating line on my bezel ring and the illuminating line on my north seeking arrow are lined up. Now if I look down, I can do during the day, right? I'm trying to test and hone my skills so I can be prepared to move at night. Should be at 30 degrees and bam, suckers at 30 degrees. It's pretty awesome. But if I have uh, an azimuth that I need to shoot that's more than 180 degrees, you know, I'd be spinning my uh, bezel ring around quite a bit. So what I can do, super easy, is you take, let's say I had to move uh, 330 degrees, 330 degrees, and so I'm going to take that and I'm going to subtract it from 360, which again in this case is going to leave me 30 degrees, except this time I'm going to turn my bezel ring clockwise, the same 10 degrees, 30 degrees, 3 degrees per click, so that's 10 degrees. So turn in clockwise now, or to the right, 10 clicks, 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And a good thing about the bezel ring, not only can you feel it, but you can also hear it when you get a little bit closer. So again, you know, I'm going to turn my body until the north seeking arrow is in line uh, with my illuminating line on my bezel ring. And I'm going to look down, you know, just to verify because I can, you know, while I'm trying to test my skills should be 330 degrees and bam, it's 330 degrees. And then I'll show you what it looks like looking down at the compass, but at night when we don't have any light that we're using. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what this looks like under limited visibility. Here we can see all of our tritium markers that we have on our compass. And the ones that we're really gonna be paying attention to is the tritium marker on our bezel ring, which you can see it spins around. Then I have a tritium marker on my north seeking arrow. I've got a larger tritium bar 
directly underneath my index line and those are the really the big ones that we're going to be paying attention to. So let's say I had to take a bearing of 60 degrees. 60 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first I'm going to start off with my, with my bezel ring directly underneath my index line like that. And I'm going to take 60, I'm going to divide it by 3 which is going to give me 20. And so I'm going to rotate my bezel ring 20 clicks counterclockwise or to the left. Alright, so that's 20 clicks. Now I'm just going to rotate my compass. Doesn't matter which way I turn. Until my north seeking arrow is in line with the index line. Now when I look down, I am good to go. Alright, so let's say I had to take an azimuth of 305 degrees. 305 degrees. So the easiest way to do that is to take 360 minus 305. So 360 minus 305 is 55. 55. Now I want to take 55 and I want to divide that by 3, which is going to give me 18.3. 18.3. So in this case, I have to round, uh, and so I'm going to round down to 18. So again, I'm going to take my index line, and I'm going to put it in line with my bezel ring, uh, with the index line on my bezel ring. And this time I'm going to turn clockwise 18 degree, 18 clicks. Now again, I rotate left to right until my north seeking arrow is in line with the index line, with that trading marker on my index line. And I'm going to look down and I'm going to be right on my bearing. Alright everybody, so there you go. There's a couple tips and tricks that you can use the next time you have to use your compass at night. So the question at the end of the day really is, what's the point and what is the purpose of being able to preset your compass at night? So really the purpose is just the same as presetting the compass during the day. So if the tritium line on my north seeking arrow is in line with the tritium line on my bezel ring, and I look back down at my compass and it is drifted left or drifted right, I know that I'm not moving in the same direction. That's really what this all comes down to. If you like the content of the video, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date. Most importantly though, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video. And until then, we'll see you.